Today we'll pick up where we left off. Dwayne's fridge has been running for a day and his batteries have had no charging at all. It's not a problem, but the batteries haven't even been topped off since he's received them. He makes a temporary solar array by leaning four panels against the south wall of his shed and wiring them in series, and then from there to the charge controller located inside the inverter. Black is negative. Why am I reading that backwards? Oh dang, I got a tingle off of that. Yeah, I don't think it's it's uh, 131 volts. Okay, I got black is common. Okay, so I've got them switched here. Right. You got them yeah, switched yeah, on the meter. Them, yeah, I got them switched. Okay. I got black is black is common. That should be my yeah. There's my. Right. It should be my ground, right? Yes. So that should be my black. So is that right backwards? Does it say minus 131? Nope, nope. It says it straight hook it backwards and see if you get a minus sign. Yeah, I do. So that would give me. Double, yes. double check my, 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 my meter. Common should be my negative, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh,. Let me just go switch, switch those. Let me look at the back and see how I did that wrong. Just switch it here on your panel. That's the code. Alright. So we've got the batteries hooked up. We've got the USB plugged into the computer. This cable is hooked up. Goes over to this transformer. And then we got a three-way outlet on it because I'm running the laptop and we're still running the refrigerator on that. That's fine. Yeah, uh, that, that's actually the code. Okay, but is my meter reading backwards? Do I have it hooked up backwards? Because I've got negative going to white, so white should be negative. And then if I've got, I've got my meter saying, uh, oh, I see. No, that should be my negative. My black should be my negative. Am I overthinking this? My black should be my negative. Okay, this is inside one of those outdoor enclosures. Now this one came with what looks like a QO series breaker, but it's not. It's actually just a switch. And this, uh, uh, this label on the front t tells you that it doesn't provide any overcurrent protection. But what we'll do is we'll bring in negative and positive. It doesn't matter which is negative and which is positive on these lugs. This will be the input. Uh, if this is going to have the 60 amp breaker, negative and positive from the photovoltaic panels, and then negative and positive out from the panels. And the reason is, is that's what the code calls for in an ungrounded system, which is what we're going to have here. The case itself will be grounded from this lug, so your enclosure is grounded, but the wiring itself is not grounded. It, it passes straight through. So this goes from the panels into the lugs, out of the breaker, to the inverter. And then on the batteries, it works the same way. It comes from the batteries to these two lugs, and then from out of this to the inverter. And then this also will have the case grounded the same way. They work the same way all the way around. And then this gives you the protection that will pass for code. Always, always ground your enclosures. That's very important because you want to keep static drained. What I've done here is I've, uh, I've uh, put together some uh, frames to hold my solar panels. And uh, all my tools are pretty much packed up. So... Uh, I wanted to just get off the shelf merchandise. I uh, went down to uh, Home Depot and was able to uh, pick up these perforated channels, you know, straight off the rack. They're about uh, $16 a piece. And then I picked up some uh, two inch galvanized uh, aluminum uh, tubing here, piping, 
uh, straight off the shelf. Uh, I did have to cut these down their 10 foot lengths, but um, you could do it with a hacksaw, you know, pretty easy. Um, so uh, I put together these panels. The connections for putting the uh, channeled steel to the tubing are right off the shelf also. So you really can't get any easier than this. Assembly time, you know, is minutes. Well, well, what are we getting? Do you remember what we were getting out, out of this? I got four panels here. We tried hooking up three, and we were pretty low on the charging voltage. So we hooked up a fourth one and came in about four volts, five volts under our yeah, maximum. It was, yeah, it was right around 140, I right. think, wasn't it? So we're doing really good. Um, got these hooked up. I just used alligator clips because that's what I had handy at the time. Uh, and, and I plan on moving these, so that's that's a temporary setup right there. I, I'm working on my racks once again. I got my post in the ground. This is a two inch schedule 40. So I doubt it's gonna move much, especially with the uh, framing system I've got going here. And then I will run a diagonal cross tie to really tighten it up. And if I need one on these posts here, just looking, and measure and I'm only going to be able to get three panels per frame so I really need to get eight panels up so I'm going to see if I can extend these poles a little bit I've got extra material over here so hopefully I'll, I'll be able to uh, slide a channel over a channel I might have to grind grind some tabs off on the one I'm going to slide over but if I can slide it over and get two bolting points you know I should be good make an extension and get a get a fourth panel on there it'll i'll do it on both sides so that i'm i'm dividing that load up e each extension will only have the load of half a panel so i should be able to get four panels on each frame by doing that okay so this is the qo series 60 amp breaker and it's just the the single switch outdoor enclosure that Dwayne's going to use for the panels. And that's two pole also, so I'm going to run both wires in, both wires out. Yeah, both wires gotcha. in, both wires out. Gotcha, okay. And then do the same with uh, with my DC input. That's correct. Okay. So I decided to uh, to go ahead and ground all my panels, of course, here, and, and run a grounding rod there. Um, I hadn't uh, grounded my uh, MPPT yet, uh, controller just because I've been doing so much but I realized yesterday I really needed to get that grounded just in case so I come out and I, I drove the um, copper rod in the ground and when I bent over to pick up the um, grounding uh, uh, cable there uh, I got a nice shock I got a, a huge jolt twice actually so uh, I guess it released all its potential I let go of it quickly the first time and was kind of stunned. I thought I'd wired something wrong. <laughs> so uh, I'm double checking everything and uh, there was no leak or no short. So I came back out and picked it up and put it in there again and got a nice shock again. But um, but it's released all, all, uh, all the, uh, the static discharge or, or potential energy that's built up in the past maybe week. It's released it now and stable. So I'm not getting a shock anymore. And there, there was no short. So, <laughs> yeah, it's important it was, to have that ground. It so, really is. And, and, and I appreciate you. Yeah, it really you, is uh, important. You talking about that because I was shocked. I really didn't uh, didn't expect that to build up. So tell me, if you don't mind me asking, because I know there's going to be people ask, okay, you got how it. much have you got invested in your homemade rack? In my homemade rack, I have uh, got $124 for the, the steel pipe here, and that's a two inch schedule 40. And then for the hardware that I've got on, the, the two inch galvanized pipe, the U bolts, the uh, Unistrut connectors and uh, these uh, six Unistruts, I've got about 
320 bucks. So 400 and 460 bucks. You know what I got in mine? How much? In my rack, I've got probably $3,000, maybe $3,500. In the rack? In just the rack. See, I, I figured y'all were doing it coming out cheaper because you were just using straight steel. Well, I, on my pipes, I use the, the drill stem from oil wells that yeah. I got off the, the surplus market. So I, I, I got a good deal on those, but my rails that I had to mount the panels to, yes. I, I bought the rails that were made for it with the mounting clips yes. that were made for and and that alone was like 2500 bucks. That gets expensive. So you did it right. Unit Unistruts, you know, a lot of the commercial companies that, that are uh, uh, approved contractors for military, uh -huh. they actually, instead of going in and using steel to make legs for brackets and stuff, they mount four uni struts together. So these are very popular in the commercial market. Just temporary. It'll Just work. Just temporary, that's right. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty, uh, pretty easy and neat little Dude, crimping you, tool for electrical. You come, you come up with some ingenious ideas. and What, what I've got here is I, I can't find any wire lugs. And I really don't want to solder these right now because this is a temporary connection. So yesterday I, I bought some uh, uh, fence clips or, or uh, wire clips for making chicken uh, uh, cages. And uh, I was going to put together some chicken cages. And I just pulled them out and I'm going to crimp the wires together using them. Um, let's see. Put that in there. These these are these are really pretty cheap. I think there's like three dollars per per hundred. So sorry, I'm getting it. No, 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 that's fine. I know, I know you're filming there. We got a good angle. Yeah. Just roll that on there, and that'll hold it. Grab some vice grips. Yeah, AKA crimpers. Hey, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> And I know there's a, a tool for uh, every job, but uh, right now my tools are hard to get at. So, that's not the best right there. There we go. I got you a good connection. Yeah, I got me a good one. A good mechanical connection generally means a good electrical connection. By the time I left Dwayne's house, he was generating 1600 watts of power and the batteries were charging very nicely. I'll go back tomorrow and finish setting up his inverter and we'll take some more readings then. That's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next week or next month or whenever I get to it. I always answer questions whether posted publicly or privately. See you then.